a rather interesting parable that Jesus tells. And we know from looking at history that it was speaking about what would happen to Jerusalem in 70 AD, so about 40 years after this time. How the Romans would come in, destroy the city, set it on fire. Because they rejected the prophets, because they rejected Jesus and his teaching. And so he's saying, not, you're going to get yours, but rather he's inviting them to conversion, to change their lives, to accept the good news, if they are willing finally to hear it. But when we hear this story, we hear about the tenants and their complete lack of respect for human dignity. With these servants, they come, they beat one, they kill another, a third they stone, and then when others come, they treated them in the same way. And finally, when the sun comes, they throw him out of the vineyard and they kill him. Such lack of respect for the sacred dignity of each human person because they were servants or because they thought they could get something from them. Today, this weekend, we celebrate Respect Life Sunday. And it's a reminder to us of the dignity of each human life. Made in the image and likeness of God. We know going back to the beginning in the book of Genesis, the very first chapter, as God creates human beings, man and woman, he says, made them in his own image and likeness. That the sacred dignity has been endowed to them by their creator with inalienable rights. We've heard that somewhere before. And we see in this image and likeness of God the ability to love. That's what I think being made in the image and likeness of God. That is our sacred dignity. That God, who is love, from all eternity is pouring himself out from Father to Son. And the Son returning that love back to the Father. And that love is so real, it's a person, the Holy Spirit. So real, this self-giving love, this self-donative love. As they donate themselves to the other for all eternity. And that love, which so desires to give itself away, then creates the universe, the stars, the planets, our little rock on which we live. And then God created life and he made each of us in his image and likeness, giving us the ability to love. And love requires, by its very nature, free will. We have that ability to choose to love or to choose not to love. And because of the whole mess up with Adam and Eve, following what the serpent told them to do, now our lives, our lives are broken. And we don't live forever here in this world. In case nobody noticed, as you get older, there are more aches and pains. There's usually less hair, or at least dark, the darkness of the hair disappears. Wrinkles come in, and as Bishop Christian likes to say, gravity wins. That it's harder to get up in the morning, harder to fall asleep, it's harder except when you're supposed to be awake at something in the middle of the day, that the things of this world mean we're broken. And our bodies don't work the way they, they're meant to. We end up with sickness, with disease, with broken relationships, with broken hearts. And so Jesus came in order to bring healing to all of this. He says, now I want you to see what your freedom was made for. You were made to love. He says, see, I am showing you what love looks like. It means dying to self for the sake of the other. As Jesus died to himself, figuratively and literally so that we could have life. 
That is your dignity. That is your worth. Every drop of his blood. And every person was made in his image and likeness. And so is to be respected and loved. How do we use our love? How do we choose to respect that? Sometimes we choose not to love. Sometimes we choose to be like those tenants in the parable who would rather get rid of the people that are trouble for them. And yet, we're called to respect the sacred dignity of each person because they're precious and loved by God regardless of their age. So if they're really old, none of you, I'm not talking about any of you, but if they're really old, Almighty God says, your worth is no less. Unfortunately, I've... uh, talked to so many people in nursing homes over the years who are just waiting to die they're saying I have no purpose left in this world and it's like but you do because you're here we're still here and so God has reason for us to be here we may not may not be obvious but father I I just can't do anything like I used to be able to do I can't even hear as well as I used to be able to hear I don't know what's going on and why I'm still here And we don't know necessarily, although sometimes it's just so that other people can have the opportunity to grow in love of people who need that love. But so anything like euthanasia or assisted suicide because someone is old or sick or is suffering, none of that goes towards the sacred dignity of that person. We look at those who are marginalized by society, whether because of their, their lack of money or because of uh, they're mentally ill or because of their color of their skin or whatever the reason may be. And we look and we say, but they have sacred dignity as well. And we are called to respect and love each of those persons. When we look even at our politicians, We are called to respect the sacred dignity in all of them. Even when they do and believe things we don't want them to do and say and believe. We're called to respect their sacred dignity. I know, I know. Sometimes politicians seem seem subhuman. But we're called to respect their sacred dignity as well. And of course, the most vulnerable the unborn, which so many offenses against them through, uh, whether it be through abortion or whether it be through embryonic testing, which ends with the death of that child, freezing children because of in vitro fertilization, all these things go against their sacred dignity as well, made in the image and likeness of God. So Jesus is calling us to see every person's dignity made in his image and likeness that every person was created by the love of God. Whether they were loved by their parents or not, they, were lo- they are loved by God. And so we are to respect each of them. And then we have to look in the mirror And we have to remember that we are first and foremost children of God, his beloved daughters and sons. And we have to respect ourselves and see the sacred dignity within each one of us. Unfortunately, over the years, as I've been talking to different people and the self-hatred that they've had and had to struggle with, they they look at themselves and they, they can't see God's image. They see only ugliness when they look at themselves. Oh, they're able to reach out to other people, but they can't even respect their own dignity. And God says, but I love you. You are my daughter. You are my son. You are precious to me. 
and I love you. And so often we sell off our sacred dignity for our desires for, for, for sin or for some other thing. We, we, we make our identity defined by our sin or our brokenness or our disorders instead of making our identity that we are beloved daughters and sons of God. Now, I say this to little children, and I hope it doesn't feel demeaning to you, but I want you to take this as it is. Your father is the king. Your father is the king. Do you know what that makes you women out there? A pretty, pretty princess. <laughs> and you gentlemen out there? The dashing prince. We are princes and princesses. Did I say that right? I think I did. Princes and princesses made image in the image and likeness of God and are loved by our Father who is the King. And we're called to respect that sacred dignity that God has given to us. Recognizing that we are first and foremost before any of our desires, before any of our brokenness, before any of our sins, before any of our disorders, our identity is children of God. You see, once we get that down, once we know who we are as children of God, once we then can start to see that sacred dignity in the people around us and we start to treat them with that sacred dignity, with great respect, then the culture starts to change. A seed here, a seed there. And the culture of death comes falling down and we can truly build up that culture of life where every person realizes that their lives matter. 